All right, so today I'm gonna cover how to service the onboard wah-wah in the Vox guitars, or the palm wah as it's more commonly known. And I'm only gonna cover how to service the uh, slide potentiometer. Because typically this is the only part in the wah circuit that wears out. The rest of the stuff's pretty robust. And you could troubleshoot, you know, if you have no wah at all, uh, just by following along with the schematic. And um, any tech should be able to sort out those issues. Um, but the most common one is the uh, slide potentiometer that needs service. And that and the repeater, which I've already covered. And there's a few myths about the onboard effects. And one in particular is that you can't service the onboard effects at all. Or some people say you can service everything except for your wah slide potentiometer once that wears out you're out of luck. That's not true. Um, God, I had an email from a guy in Italy years ago restoring a star stream. And, you know, the wah pot was completely worn out. So he asked me if I could help him out with a replacement or how to service it. So I explained to him how to rebuild the original. And he emailed me back saying, basically saying that I was an idiot and it's impossible to rebuild and I should sell him the last remaining one I had on hand, which I'm not gonna do. These are impossible to find, and I only have one left. I used to have a few. I've used them all in restorations, and I wanna hold on to the original as a reference, and if I ever feel there's a need, like a demand, to rebuild these, I might make more. I doubt it. These aren't as popular as Fenders and Gibsons, but anyway, I, I'm not selling the last one. I'm more than happy to help people out with replacement parts, but this is not one that I can provide. So I'm going to show you how to recondition it, clean it, and rebuild it if necessary. But anyway, the guy in Italy was basically like, you know, a stupido, you uh, sell me your original Vafangule. He was really rude, something like that. So I was like, whoa there, Tony, you know, just pop it out, email it to me. I mean, sorry, ship it to me, and I'll, uh, I'll rebuild it for free and, and ship it back to you. You just pay the shipping. And he said, no, so I don't know what to tell you. You know, um, how's the saying go? Catch a man a fish, uh, feed him for a day, teach a man to fish, feed him for a lifetime. So I'm going to show you how to rebuild it yourself wherever you are in the world. Um, everything you need to know will be in the following steps here. <clears throat> and other people have asked um, for a workaround if this part's missing or partially missing, or if it's damaged, like this cover was damaged. And there is one, I got an email from a really nice man in Russia years ago, and he asked for help with his onboard effects schematics, and I emailed those, and he emailed me back a fix he came up with where he ditched the stock cover and brush mechanism, and he rigged up this tiny little part, uh, which was 72 cents from Mouser, this tiny slide potentiometer. and. I knew right off the bat it's 100k linear and it has a center detent. So I knew the taper wouldn't be good and the detent wasn't a problem because the mechanical advantage of the, uh, the palm wah mechanism makes it so you can't feel the detent. But you know, his part was, I don't know if you can see that, 72 cents from Mouser. So I ordered a bunch and then when Rob Campanella brought his ultrasonic by, the wah needed to be fixed because he uses the crap out of his. So I took his original brush assembly out and I used Ivan's fix. And this was back, I don't know if you can see that, in June of 2013. I labeled it and put it back in the case. And it's now uh, March of 2016. So I told him, I don't know how long this is gonna last, just bring it back when it craps out. And it lasted a few years, which I was surprised. And uh, he's going back on tour so he's gonna get a better fix. And you know, Ivan fix worked for whatever he was doing in Russia. Maybe he wasn't playing out live a lot, but um, it kind of reminds me of a silly story actually from the Cold War period between Russia and the United States. Um, not the scary stuff where our governments were threatening the whole human race with uh, nuclear Armageddon. I'm talking about just the innocuous space race between the two countries, which that competition brought a lot of good technology and um, one of the things the Americans did they dumped a ton of money and time 
into developing a pen that could write in zero gravity, the space pen as it's become known. And the Russians just used a freaking pencil, 72 cent pencil, you know, and it worked. And if you're just going up into orbit a few times and then dumping your craft in the ocean, maybe all you need is a pencil. But, you know, Rob uses the hell out of his ultrasonic, especially the palm wah. He plays like lap steel slide with the Brian Jones town. And, you know, he's going to get the space pen fix. And it's the only fix I'm going to show you because it's really the only one I've seen that it keeps it looking original and has the elegance of the original and it works good. So I'm not going to show you any other jerry-rigged uh, things. People have uh, tried rotary potentiometers and things. None of that seems to work as good. So we're just going to cover in this video the slide pot and how to either clean it or rebuild it. Okay, so for the Vox Palmwa circuit, I'm going to show you um, a couple things you can do to service them. And these are really the only things you're ever going to have to do in terms of um, repair or service due to parts failure. You know, if you have no WA at all, it's typically a wire pulled off somewhere, a signal wire you know, either to the motherboard or to the module itself. But typically, if you move your palm wall back and forth and you're hearing a lot of noise and scratchiness, um, typically that's a good thing because all that means is, is basically it needs to be cleaned. If you have it cutting out completely, but it still works, except for when you get to usually the middle of the travel, that's usually bad because that means your resistive strip is probably completely worn out and then you need a complete rebuild. Um, but that's not the end of the world. But anyway, if it's just scratchy, you don't even have to take this uh, slide pot out of the guitar. And uh, I only have this out because I just rebuilt Rob's. He needed a complete rebuild. And um, typically all you have to do, see if I can focus this a little bit better here for you. But there's four tangs on the side of this metal case that hold this top phenolic uh, cover plate on. There's one, two, and then the other side, three and four. Now this case doesn't belong to Rob. This was a mail-in for a rebuild. And the previous owner broke two of the tangs off. He also broke his cover plate, which I'll show you I fixed as well. But I can't stress enough though that this part, you know, it's stack pull, stack pull's a known brand. But I mean, come on, when have you ever seen another slide potentiometer like this? This thing is just wacky with this bracket and everything. I've never seen another one of these in the wild, only in a Vox guitar. So I can't stress enough that you really want to be careful when you're working on this thing. So to just clean this, leave it in the guitar, leave the wires attached, just very gently pry up on each of these tangs you don't have to bring it up to 90 degrees, uh, you know, completely flush with the side of the case. Typically like a 30 degree bend is all you need on each and then you can wiggle this case enough to get it out and get at the inside. Okay, and you don't want to again bend these too much because you're going to crystallize the metal, it's going to break off and then you're into another fix like epoxy or finding some type of clamping to keep this thing on, on there secure. But anyway, Get your cover plate off and inspect this uh, resistive strip here. And if it looks good like this, it's just dirty, that's great. You, all you want to do is clean it. All you need is a good uh, contact cleaner. And I like Deoxit D5, it works good. It protects the contacts as well. And then you want something that has a lubricant after that. And I like Puretronics because it's ozone friendly, it's, it's a greener product, it's easier easier on my lungs uh, for starters and it's safe on the um, vintage plastic that they used for the backing material so clean this metal strip which is your wiper and clean and condition both the metal strip and your resistive strip then all you got to do is put the cover back on and again these parts only go 
in one way. This brush mechanism, you want to clean those contacts as well. And when you put it back, it has two um, protrusions that go in these holes on the slider mechanism. So it only drops in one way. If you have it backwards, it won't sit flush, you'll know. Same thing with the cover. These tangs only meet up with these indentations on the cover one way. So it's pretty much impossible to put it back together backwards. Okay, so then you wanna take some pliers that you know, fit just on those tangs and gently crimp that back over on each side just enough to make sure this cover's secure. You know, don't go and use a lot of pressure and crack the thing. Just enough so it's secure. And that's it. Your wash should be good as gold for years to come if you just cleaned it. And, you know, you might find in there, usually it's hardened old grease from the factory. They did use a little lube from the factory. Or if, you know, like some dirty hippie owned this before you, there could be hair in there, which I've seen. Who knows? But you don't want to do what the guy who mailed this in did to it. And he packed the case with white lithium grease. Um, I think he thought, you know, maybe his grandpa told him or something that lithium grease is a good lubricant. It's not for electronics. Same goes for other petroleum distillates like uh, WD-40 and so on. You want to use a good um, tuner cleaner, if anything, and just on the resistive strip and the wiper. Okay, so I had to soak this in thinner and then um, degrease it just to get it clean. But you want it clean as a whistle with no debris or anything in there. And um, that's it. Now, on the other side of the coin, if you opened this up, this is the one he sent. And you can see here, he actually, uh, if you can see that, he cracked the, uh, the cover in half here on this end, trying to pry it up. And you really don't need a heavy hand like that. Just really gently prying the tangs will get this thing out. And I was able to make a brace and um, save his original cover. Between this brace and the replacement strip, it's solid as a rock now. And also, I have these um, brass machine screws, which I typically don't use. But I just wanted to use them as an illustration of if you messed up your original solder terminals here, you can actually use a brass machine screw, which is really easy to solder to, and just wrap the wires around those and solder to those. And you've effectively got two new solder terminals, and they'll also function to keep your new strip in place. So again, you know, if you did break this, it is possible to just take a new piece of phenolic board and machine a whole new cover. But it's a lot of time, and you know, this guy doesn't want to pay for that. I charge by the hour, so he was okay with me just repairing his and um, you know if you have to repair it so be it but if you're careful you, you shouldn't really damage anything here it's pretty sturdy vintage part but that being said you know you don't want to again move these tangs back and forth too much don't take it apart and put it back together a lot because it just doesn't stand up well to that kind of thing alright so say <laughs> you opened it up and your resistive strip looks like this, where it's completely worn down, all the carbon is missing in the middle. Okay, so typically when that happens, your wah will cut out signal in the middle of its travel, and you'll only hear any wah going on on the base or the treble end. That is a bummer, because now you have to rebuild it. And if you're gonna rebuild it, it's not impossible, but it's gonna take a little time, and you're gonna need a few supplies. And one thing you're going to need for sure is a new resistive strip. And I luckily scored these uh, 1970s production uh, stack pole sliders that are 500k linear. And they're slightly bigger than the original in the Vox guitars. And that's a good thing because you want to make sure you have an, enough surface area to accurately reproduce the resistive strip in there and then some to cut it off and form it. And you want a higher value that's linear because to accurately match the taper of the slide pot that sounds best for the wah is almost impossible. So again, I recommend anything from say a 200K to a 500K fader that you can rob the resistive strip out of. So you're gonna need one of those 
and um, you're gonna need for sure some machine screws. I like a 080 by 316 machine screw. Um, brass is better if you're gonna solder right to it, but it doesn't have to be. And of course, you're gonna want some 080 uh, machine nuts. And I use 080 because it's the same diameter as the original factory rivets. I don't recommend, I mean, I have the rivets, but if you don't have the correct swaging tool at home, which I'm sure you don't, it's a lot easier to mess up the new strip because now you have to rely on hammering or squeezing with pliers that rivet down and trying to get it secure. And oftentimes people either over secure it and it cracks the, the cover or the new strip or it's too loose and it doesn't make a good electrical contact with the solder terminals. So anyway, you need a new fader. You need the hardware. You want probably some micro wrenches. Um, you might want some pliers to handle the hardware because it is tiny. And you're going to want a drill press. And the first thing you want to do is drill out your covers, um, factory rivets, get that resistive strip out of there, but don't harm these, again, these solder terminals. You want to try to keep them. Okay, so I'm just going to drill uh, apart this slide pot and we'll, we'll rob the, the strip out of it and we'll form it and make a new one. So once you've drilled out those two rivets, you want to pull apart the, um, the potentiometer, get rid of any junk that you don't need, and you just want this resistive strip. And the cool thing about these stack pull pots that I've found is even though they're from the 70s, I don't know if you can see this or not, but they are the exact same material that was in the uh, the Vox guitars. So the good thing about that is dimensionally the thickness, it's gonna have the same pressure against the brush mechanism. And now the brush mechanism is basically spring type uh, metal, if you can see that on camera. So it's pretty forgiving. If you have a thicker or thinner material, you can kind of bend it around and you'll still get good contact. But the good thing about the stack pole having two of the dimensions the same is you're assured that you're going to have the same thickness and the same type of performance because it's the same exact carbon and everything. And it's the same width, so it saves you having to trim it down this way. So all you want to do is basically um, you know, line up your old one as a template. And if it broke, you can actually just use the cover, the holes on the cover as a template and you just want to mark them and uh, I like to mark them and drill first before I actually trim this down okay because when you trim it down the cut is very close to the mounting hole and if you drill it after it can be a pain in the butt to get the hole drilled without breaking the whole end of the strip off so just use a sharpie or whatever mark your holes if you messed it up too much you can use a um, micrometer and the distance you want in the resistive strip is about 29 millimeters or uh, one in 1.14 inches from center to center all right so once you've drilled out your new strip you want to basically mount it in with your 080 machine screws like I've done here. Make sure that it doesn't protrude too much on the inside so it doesn't hang up on anything. And when you're done, it should look something like this, which is pretty darn near factory original. And um, then you want to go ahead and hook up a multimeter and see what you've got for resistance across. Because um, if your local tech or you scores a slide fader to rebuild it locally, I doubt you're gonna find the same stack pole ones. And even the originals, the tolerances at the factory were so you know, off, they never measured the same. So this one I just rebuilt for Rob. 
comes at 0.559 megs. So, you know, 559K. And um, just to show you here what I mean, I use the same exact stack pull resistive strip on the other one I rebuilt for the mail-in rebuild. And that one measures out a little different. I think it was around 400K. And um, yeah, this one's 412K. So whatever, once you get your new resistive strip in there, just measure across the terminals and write down what you have. Because at this point, you got to do some Ohm's Law calculations to get it back down to the 100K or so taper that you want. Okay, so I have the rebuilt uh, slide pot reinstalled in Rob's guitar. And after playing around with uh, tapering resistors to get it, you know, back to where I feel it sounds good with, with this wah circuit, um, here's what it sounds like. <laughs> in action sounded pretty good and you know I don't have any plug-and-play um, tapering resistor values that I can give you for whatever you know value you come up with at home or your tech comes up with when you rebuild the pot and you kind of want to tailor that to the cue of the wah in in the guitar you know the specs especially on the inductors were, were all over the place so you really best to just find what sounds best to your ear and for your your instrument and um, I think this is going to be the last Vox FX tutorial video because everything else is pretty simple if anybody has any questions uh, about the you know the booster circuit or anything like that you can just email me and again I have complete reproductions exact in all respects of the uh, printed circuit boards and all associated parts. So if you're a tech and you've got one of these that came in and the circuit board's broken, I have new ones I can I can sell you for cheap. I also have completely built and assembled um, modules or complete, you know, motherboards stuffed with the modules tested. And again, they're indistinguishable from the original eco-made Italian modules. It's the same exact vintage PCB board, tropical fish caps, everything's vintage throughout. Um, so yeah, whatever you need, I should be able to get you rocking and rolling. Again, except for the original slide pot. You're gonna have to rebuild that like I just showed you. And um, yeah, if anybody else has any questions, just shoot an email to acidfuzz at acidfuzz.com. Cheers.